Hey guys, and welcome to another virtual lesson. This week we're going to talk about organic chemistry. That's the chemistry where we study carbon atoms and how different structures can combine and form based on a carbon backbone, or carbon as the central atom in a lot of these structures. So I figured the best way to do that this week would be to study GAC and how to make GAC. In order to do that, we need glue, we need borax. We used borax before to make crystals in those ornaments we made. And we also need just some water and food coloring to make it a fun color. So I need half a cup of Elmer's glue, that's half a cup right there. I'm going to put that in a giant mixing bowl so that I can mix it together. And the reason we need glue in this is because the glue is what gives us those solid backbones, those carbon atoms that we need. And the reason that GAC works is because those carbon atoms all form really, really long carbon chains. They link together and form these really, really long chains. And that's what helps the GAC give that like stretchy kind of slimy structure. We also need three-eighths of a cup of water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give my water a fun color and make it red. So I'm just going to add a couple drops of food coloring just to make it a nice red color. Because who doesn't want red gack? take three-eighths of a cup of this. Spilling a little bit, that's okay. And now I'm going to mix it together. I'm just going to combine those two things. I feel like I'm on like a cooking show or something. <laughs> All right. So now that we've got that nice kind of pinkish color, we're ready to add the secret ingredient. All right. So now what we do is we're going to make just a quick solution of borax in water. And the reason we're going to do that is because we need that borax in a nice liquid form in order to combine with our glue to make GAC. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a teaspoon of borax. Okay, it's a little bit too much. I'm just gonna dump it out. We've got a teaspoon of borax. And to that, I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of water. So again, what this is doing is it's dissolving the borax. It's going to give me a nice solution of the borax in water. And again, we know from chemistry in previous units that we need solutions often to get those chemicals mixed in so that they react and do what we want them to do. All right. Perfect. This is just about dissolved. Perfect. OK. So now, all we got to do is add our solution of borax into our glue. All right. And now comes the fun part. So now we just got to stir it and stir it and stir it in order to make that fun yak. All right. You can already tell you've got a nice... Nice gap forming. If you have younger siblings, like for example, I have a three-year-old nephew, this is a very, very fun thing that we like to do with him. Right. So again, what you're left with in the end is something like this. 
all nice and gooey, all nice and fun. All right. And so, why does this happen? Why does this work? Now comes the chemistry part. We have a really, really long, like I said, carbon chain. Carbon chains are just really, really long linkages of carbon. Those carbon atoms are just attached in really, really long chains. Those brackets around it with that end just means that there can be as many carbon chains, as many of those units as possible. And so what GAC is made of is just a bunch of these chains all linked up together. And that's why you get this structure. It's already even starting to solidify even more. You get this thing that sticks together that can do all of these fun, stretchy things because those carbons are, those carbon atoms are linked together and they don't want to let go of each other. The best part, in my opinion, about organic chemistry is when you switch up just the carbons and try and add different things into them. Those different things, those different units, we call functional groups. And so, for example, a functional group in chemistry might be an alcohol. Alcohol is just an oxygen and a hydrogen bonded to a carbon atom. So for example, if we look at, I'm gonna use a paper towel. If we look at, let's say, peppermint. Peppermint is just a bunch of carbon atoms, that green. And when you add on that alcohol functional group, that OH, you get something that smells like peppermint. If it was just the carbon atoms, it wouldn't have any sort of smell. It would be kind of like a hydrocarbon. It would be like a gasoline almost. But the second you add that OH onto it, it gives it that fruity, that kind of minty smell. And that's, again, because of that alcohol, that OH group. This is also the reason why, for example, cinnamon smells the way it does, because that's an aldehyde functional group. That's also the reason why, let's say, eggs, when they rot, smell disgusting, because there's that sulfur in there that has a sulfur functional group, makes it smell disgusting. The most disgusting, however, is those amine functional groups, those NH2s on either side of any sort of molecule. And so, for example, in the molecule putrescine, it has two amine, those NH groups, on either side of that molecule, and it's the reason why garbage smells disgusting, because those amine functional groups kind of smell like rotting fish, they smell like garbage, and so when you have this molecule in different objects, like for example, rotting flesh or something when like a dead body, it's just kind of laying around for a while, this molecule starts to form, and that's why it smells as bad as it does, because of those amines, those NH groups, on any side of your molecule. 